And the whole time, the whole thing was shadowing us, right behind us, right on the side of us. You could, you could kind of see the thing moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, the whole night, this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and black thing is all I can call it. Squatch DTV. Exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your host, Steve and Chris. And good evening, Cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch D TV for today's date, November 22nd, 2020. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective Steve Coles, along with my co host, right down. Well, down there or you know, kind of around I'm there. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chris Bennett, how are you doing, Chris? Doing good, Steve. Man, it's getting cold around here. I, I think Shoot. it got down in the 50s today. <laughs> <laughs> that is no fair. That is, that that is, Chris, that's a bitch move. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, up there or, you know, even further down. And Chris, over, wanna... over, over there, right here. Yeah, yep, yep. This guy. Howdy, howdy. Uh, there's Mr. Reverend Jeff Kelly. Hello, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing fine. And for those of you, before you ask, and I am actually a legally ordained minister in the in, in the Universal Life Church of California and have been since 1999. So you may indeed call me Reverend. I believe it's Reverend Captain would actually be the proper denomination <laughs> since I have my captain's license as well. But, you know, we'll just stick with Reverend for tonight. How about that? That is so cool. Jeff works just as fine. I mean, yes. it really does. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do our roll call, <clears throat> folks. Of course, we got B in the house. Hi, B. And uh, we got Timothy. He's new. He found us. Hello, Tim. Welcome hey, to the Tim. show. OT OT is on time. He's like, woohoo, on time. <laughs> OT. Quick Witty's back again. Hello, Quick Witty. Welcome. <laughs> And uh, who else we got here? Uh, so far, oh, Rick, Rick Bell, of course, Rick being a little sarcastic. Bigfoot isn't real. <laughs> uh, I know. Right. Terry's in the house. Hello, Terry. Welcome. Welcome, Terry. Tack. How you doing, Mikey? How you doing? Hey, Tack. Of course, we got Charlie Wonton on in the house. Ah, <laughs> Charlie, welcome. And, I like uh, wontons. Diane, Diane's in the house. And, and, and there's welcome. the real Mr. Jimmy Trick. <laughs> 
Keith in the house. Hello, Keith. Keith. Quick, quick what he said. He's got some tough questions for y'all. Okay, oh. that's what we like. We like stuff yes. like that. Tough questions are never a problem because I have tough answers. <laughs> and sometimes I have no answer at all. Right. That's a tough <laughs> answer sometimes. I don't know. Shit. And we got Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Welcome, it's welcome. Sarah. So here we are, and uh, I think you missed John Swan out there, my friend. Is he? I did. Yes, Hello, John. Did. Yeah, we don't want to. Welcome, John. Hello, hey, John. man. He's got the uh, good old New York Yankee. Uh, yeah. I know what it's like to be the guy left out of the room. So, you know, <laughs> hey, John, glad you're out there. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, Reverend Jeff is uh, the host of the Squatchers Lounge podcast and runs a Facebook call, uh, group called the Squatchers Lounge. I've been there forever, just about. Oh, God, yeah. And, um, so, uh, you, you know, know, it's funny. The Squatchers Lounge came out of the necessity of bullying. Really, it did. Um, when the, uh, the the coalition for retarded Bigfoot people in the world got uh, got out of hand, we left it. We just said, "Screw it, I'm done with that childish crap." And we started the Squatchers Lounge, which was no drama. You start drama in the lounge, and you're booted. We don't ban you. We just kick you out, so you can read it. We we love pe some people say we don't even join. We just come there to read it with our coffee in the morning, and that's great. But yeah, that literally was the reason that the that the Squatchers Lounge was created was to get away from the, a lot of the Bigfoot bullying that used to go on. Speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> Rick there in his usual. <laughs> oh, Richter. Come on, R man. Jump Richter in his sarcasm. <laughs> See, I, I know Richter very well, and that's just the way he... He he busts he rags on every he rags on me too so yeah Richter Richter tried to do one of those hit piece shows on me and it's it seemed like 118 views in three years so not really all that concerned <laughs> oh, about how Richter feels about me um you know <clears throat> it's just been one of those things that oh. when 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 personalities clash I don't give a crap anymore and yeah. that's just one of those so and you, you know, know I, Richter. A long time no speak ever don't think about you you have no zero room in my brain for thought but you know thanks for being a dick oh, well we love you both so we love it's you okay. both. it's fine New neutrality is a great place to be right now absolutely you can be neutral that's wonderful i don't have to be well i know I don't know, and I, I prefer not to be gender neutral. I'm a guy. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I know which bathroom to use. That's for sure. Uh-oh. Now now there goes the neighborhood. Mr. Bachochin is in the house. Jay. Jay. <laughs> um, so anyway, how in the hell did you get started in this uh, crazy stuff? Well... And, and by you know, the way, Mike says that the Squatchers Lounge was the first podcast he ever watched. Rick well, that's was awesome. Second. Rick <laughs> was... <laughs> well, that that's funny because I, my show actually was born of Richter's show. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, um, yeah the, the the podcast, <laughs> my, the Squatchers Lounge podcast was born of Richter's show. It was at a team, it, it was at a time that Team Taser was around and and Snow Walker Prime and 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 all those people, Ro Rosie Hebe and. And uh, Sean Aravong and Richter and myself, and well, before myself, Richter, they they all had this this coalition of shows that were going on that were supporting each other, and you know they were cross membering back and forth, and actually trying to build something decent in the you know in the Facebook world for some actual entertainment to go along with the Bigfoot. Yeah. A lot of them had this this goal of being on TV. That was their ultimate goal. They wanted to be on TV. They wanted to be TV personalities. And they invited me to come on Richter's show, which I guess at that time, Richter, your show was scraping the bottom of the shark, too. The bottom of the jumping the shark and scraping the bottom of the barrel, too. But, you know, they invited me on their show. And the voice, that, that's what everybody listens to. They don't really listen to my content. They listen to my voice. I could literally sit and talk about the color of bubble gum on the streets of New York City for two hours, and people would tune in. Um, I mean, I can debate anybody on just about any subject, whether I'm right or not. It doesn't matter. I'll still <laughs> debate it that I am right until the very end of it. But, uh, yeah, I went on Richter's show and we talked Bigfoot and we, we talked about my one, one, one of my sightings in Pennsylvania when I was 16. And, uh, you know, I was one of the first people that actually admitted that I saw its genitals. It had balls the size of your fist swinging between its legs coming down a game trail. And, you know, it was just something that was so disturbing. But I, I figured out later that it wasn't so much the, the, the balls that was disturbing me. It was the length of the legs. 
um, in the Bigfoot. Bigfoot themselves, everybody, oh, it's the arms, it's the arms. They got weird, weirdly long arms, but they don't. They have weirdly long legs. <laughs> you look at a gorilla stand up and go waddling around. You look at a chimp stand up and go walking around. You look at a billy ape who's six feet tall go waddling around. They've got these short ass little weird legs. But a Sasquatch, as it gets up and turns on them big hips and just starts walking away, it's got weirdly long ass legs. And that just kind of draws your attention to that portion of the body that was in there. And after the show, Ro, uh, Ro fell in love with my voice and offered to help me start the Squatchers Lounge podcast and then did exactly one show with me. Uh, <laughs> and then became entirely too busy to do anything else for me. And I started my own channel. And from there, I basically just built my brand. Um, first few years, uh, it was great. You know, I had uh, Kip Morrow was on the show. He was my first co-host. Uh, he lasted like six weeks before fire season broke out. And then he had to split. Yep. Um, and then we brought on David Batdorf after that. And David Batdorf and I were like brothers for a long time, man, like years we were brothers. His kid knew who I was. His wife knew who I was. We went on investigations together. And, uh, you know, there was some weird falling out there. And I really don't even understand the whole weird falling out thing. But he'd been kind of looking for an exit for a while and blew up after Trump won the election on me and left the show. If any, if you haven't heard the truth before, that's really what the truth is. My last text message to David Batdorf was as though I may not have a seat at your table, you will always have a seat at mine. Yeah. Although this many years later, you can go screw yourself. Um, <laughs> sorry, you haven't even contacted <laughs> me in four years to say, hey, buddy, you know, I may have been a little, <laughs> little overzealous with some of that. You know, yeah. you didn't, you didn't deserve it. But no, I've gotten absolutely no contact. And with somebody like that, I don't, I don't beg to stay friends with you. I just don't. When, when things become too toxic, I have to cut it out. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's it's a shame uh, when politics, you know, Chris and I have had the, this conversation personally, and we don't really talk politics, but it's a shame yeah. when, when politics or even stances on certain things, like I can be, you know, people like, there's people that believe in the woo or... Or, or whatever if they want to believe what they want to believe that they're entitled to do that i have no harm against them and they they could have a seat at my table too we have quasi theories from a quasi scientist with dean huh? cooper every single week on the squatchers lounge and he talks about all that woo fairies and dancing and you know the haunted room and, and gremlins and all kind of stuff because it's fun to talk about yep. and he believes a lot of that stuff some of those things actually happened to him he wasn't just making some of those things up yep. and by no means am i one to say that didn't happen to you yep okay I, i'm not i'm not going to say that you didn't experience i'm not even going to be the one that tells Dr. Matthew Johnson that he doesn't experience Zorth because he's got a effed up brain from an injury and he very may well experience Zorth. It's the idiots that surround him and support him and lie to him like the emperor's new clothes go, no, nah, Matt, yeah, no, Zorth is definitely there. There's a portal, buddy. <laughs> no problem. You shine some light on it, shut that portal down and we'll be just fine. Those are the people that are the actual problem. They are. It, because that becomes the cult. That becomes yeah. the sycophantic cult at that point. And then they can't be wrong. So because if they're wrong, then they're completely wrong. So so how how angry does it make you sometimes? And I'll see this conversation going along in, in multiple chats or multiple groups, and all of a sudden somebody from the the uh Janu group will say well, they're tracheon, and they're 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 interdimensional, and and they they can be killed, but they're dangerous, and they they kind of derail the whole thing. On you know, it, it it's kind of the same way that my drunk uncle Lou will come in during Thanksgiving and just screw up the whole talk about the NFL season. You know, <laughs> he doesn't even watch NFL. He's talking about cricket because he lives in freaking the UK. You know, but it doesn't matter to him. He just wants to be part of the conversation. But you're right. It, 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 it does get frustrating. But, you know, they have that block button for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it does work. I, I, I usually people, engage. Yeah. I, well, I try to I try to I bait people a lot. I'll admit it. I, I bait I bait famous people. Hell, I've baited Jeff Meldrum into admitting that he doesn't trust uh, Todd Standing as far as he can throw him. But for some <laughs> reason, he still supports his content that he puts out, which I don't understand unless he's on the payroll. But. I digress. Yeah, it, it, I, I try to. In, in, oh my God! Let me sing you the song of my people, my poor birds. <laughs> um, you know, it, it gets to a point though that 
they don't have anywhere to really interact with each other because none of their stories match. Yeah. So I'm not saying that you're not looking for some interdimensional being named Zorth who came through a portal and turns into a tree. I'm just saying that's not a Sasquatch. Okay, I'm saying that, that what we're looking for is different than what you're looking for. Right. You're just sucking on to us because you've got nowhere to go. <laughs> the UFO people don't want you. The Bigfoot people don't want you. The paranormal people don't want you. You've got nowhere to go, and the Bigfoot people are the closest things that we can suck onto, just like Brian Sykes. You remember Dr. Brian Sykes? Yep. Mr. Brian Sykes, he wanted to be part of the Bigfoot world so far as that he tried to make the Yeti into some kind of specialized bear and then rode around the Bigfoot trail and all, you know, to all the conferences, tried to sell this idea to other scientists who wouldn't give him the time of day on it, only to have his own co-hosts make another show behind him to show that none of that was actually true. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just they, they it's sycophantic cultism is what and, it really and, is. And, and and the sad thing about that is, is that it doesn't matter if you're a researcher or even a scientist to some extent. I mean, look at the Ketchum debacle. I mean, if that oh it wasn't God. if that wasn't being a sycophant, uh, I've seen that non-disclosure agreement. I and, uh, well, the and, problem with that, yeah, but that only lasts a year. No, it was like uh, legally, that's all they can support. Legally, that's that's all they can actually enforce in, an, in a non. Once it's been released to the world, you're yeah. no longer under any any NDA. Right. So but the the fact it, it's amazing because she was having these people pay her and said, "We're going to tell you the results, but you're not allowed to tell them publicly." Well, and yeah, you're not and allowed to, to, to interpret them. You're not allowed to do any of it. Sample six was the Justin Smeha bear steak. Yes. Now, I, I am intimately involved in, in that particular sample because I was here for it. I, I was witness to some of the phone calls. I came right after the really horrible phone call during uh, when she was doing all this sampling and, and, and she was finding out that we were sending out to other labs to have it, you know, verified that it's something they can't identify. That's all we wanted to know. We were just blindly sending it out to these labs going, no, we just want to know what this is. If you can identify it, that's great. We don't really know what it is. You know, we're not telling them it's bear. You know, we find out what this is. And they came back with bear, bear bear in all three cases they came back with bear but melba says that there's a full bigfoot genome yep. on this sample six that the mother is completely human and that the father is some kind of unknown monkey ape yep now the sad part about that is is the unknown monkey ape is probably the bigfoot samples that she has in her data but she's not willing to follow those because she's already following the cultism that this has to be a hybrid. Now, yeah. hybridism doesn't work that way. Okay. No. Like, uh, here, yeah, I love doing this on to, to people and it, and it really ends up blowing their minds. It's like, uh, Chris, I'm going to ask you a question, buddy. Which mm -hmm. came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, the egg. Are you sure? Where did it come yeah. from? Yes. It came Where from my uh, lizard. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly right. You, uh, you, you think, you think sideways. The no, it, it came from the proto chicken. Okay, there were things that were weren't exactly what we have as modern day chickens before there were chickens. They were proto chickens. So, yeah. yeah, you're right. A lizard caught a virus. The virus changed some kind of a protein in the egg, and when the egg hatched, it became something else. That's literally how easy evolution yeah. can work the right. problem with hybridization is is okay so now you have seven valleys full of these proto chickens okay three of the valleys get infected with this virus and they're now laying chicken eggs so three valleys have ch chicken eggs but four valleys have proto chicken eggs and yeah. proto chickens now you have a giant population of both proto chickens and chickens that now have to interbreed down into whatever the modern chicken comes out to be. Yeah. That's how hybridization works. It can't happen like a, an, a, an unknown monkey ape thing steals an Indian woman, breeds with her, somehow it magically takes yeah. and it spits out a Bigfoot and then Bigfoot are now in the world. Right. One is, and it's probably going to die in infancy. But yeah, if, you know, 10,000 Sasquatch invade all the Indian tribes and take 10,000 Sasquatch women or 10,000 
women and, yeah. and, and magically breed with them and magically make hybrids. And then those hybrids breed together. And then, okay, then that's how a hybrid works. But it's sad that a DNA scientist doesn't understand how hybridization actually right. works. Right. And then to feed it to a population of sycophants that go, bravo, bravo, yeah. yes, you're published. Oh, bravo, this is such science. Welcome, welcome. And but, you know, there's uh, a, there's a lot but, of ways. But excuse me, Doctor Ketchum, uh, you're 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 published, but you bought the journal. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, I didn't want you know we we uh, court. <laughs> well, you know, uh, there are a lot of ways that nature prevents uh, crossbreeding too. Uh, that that you know, is absolutely correct. Like you know, we for years, okay, well even centuries, uh, farmers and stuff have bred mules. Uh, for working now they they didn't breed the mule they bred a donkey to a horse and the offspring is a mule or a jackass so, some people don't know that <laughs> or a jill ass it just depends but the reason why they don't breed two mules is because automatically when the mule is born they're sterile well, uh, they, they we, can't used to, we used to think that clear up until about 20 years ago, but they're finding that like 35% of those hybrids, those, those mules are actually viably able to create offspring. I, I have mean, heard stories yeah, about this happening. Yeah, yeah. Where they just, where they just get out, you know, get out lost in the, get out lost, you know, in, in the herd and start breeding. And all of a sudden there's half yeah. on there. Yeah. What, what do you, what do you call half horse and a half donkey or, or you know, <laughs> is that a honky? I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> 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 but there have been the odd story or two that, Yes, you you had a Jack and a Jenny, you know, oh. two mules. And, oh, and, 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 and here, here comes here comes Troyford throwing throwing in the red herring. Let's not forget. Don't forget the Nephilim. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The angel DNA that might be in there. Oh. Well, I'm I'm trying to figure out where 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 Meldrum's hybrid is because if I'm not mistaken, I'm uh, not Meldrum. I'm sorry, Melba's Mel, Melba Melba and Meldrum just sounds so. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where Melba's hybrid is because she. I, I believe there was a claim that she magically passed out and it was at her Sasquatch habituation site and she woke up sore between the legs. Yeah. Yeah, oh. pow, chicka, pow, wow. I oh, mean, no. uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you, can't, you, know, well, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> no, you can't. Now, after the big release of, of all of her, <clears throat> you know, her terabytes of data and everything else, and scientists started bouncing their DNA off of the known genome labs and coming back with like panda bear and shit. I mean, mm. it was it was really insane. Um, I, I got a hold of, of, of the dearly departed J.C. Johnson. Now, I don't, I'm not going to talk ill about the, the dead. You know, that's just not right to do. J.C. was a great was a, was a great Fordian investigator. He yep. really would take on just about anything from giant birds to, you know, to to, 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 to yeah, yeah to, to cannibal dwarves. I mean, he was he, if, if, if the story was out there, he was on it. Um, and I, and I talked to him at length several, several times after this, this whole release and asked him why he wouldn't come forward and just denounce it. It's like, JC, I know you're a man of Fortean, but you're also a man of, uh, that applies science to those things to disprove them. In many of your cases, you're just like, nah, this wasn't no big ass bird. This was probably some, you know, vulture that somebody just never seen something that big before, but. He just he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. And then the the TV started and the press conferences started. And the next thing that got involved with that was the Erickson project. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. You know, and that was another, you know, Adrian Erickson was a, was a dupe. He he really wasn't a con man. He he got right. duped into all of that. He spent sure he he spent millions of dollars on just absolute garbage, but he did it without any consultation. You know, yeah. he didn't really consult anybody that could <clears throat> could talk him out of 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 buying stupid stuff like that. Like Wally, Wally just would buy stuff and then he would show it to people. But you know, the Erickson people, they they really everybody that surrounded that poor guy just just stomped him into the dirt. <laughs> and it was it was really kind of sad to see what all that turned into, which was nothing. A guy laying under a carpet holding his breath as long as he could before he exhaled. Um, the Chewbacca mask, uh, the Matilda Chewbacca mask that yep. that they totally ruined Dr. Bender Nagel's life with. 
I honestly feel that Dr. Bendernagel would have most likely felt as though his life was better lived of never seeing a Bigfoot than to get to heaven and find out that the only Bigfoot he ever saw was Matilda the Chewbacca mask. Oh. My, uh, you know, I, I, I knew the Erickson project was in trouble, um, years, uh, uh, years ago, um, I, I had heard that the Erickson project actually was staked out not only in Kentucky with the ORV footage, the pancake eater, that stuff. <laughs> Um, but it was also staked out on the Janice Carter farm. A lot of people didn't know that, but it was staked out on the Carter farm as well. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I, I tell a lot of stories that come out of the, the Fox, the Bigfoot uh, era of the Carter ranch. Right. Um, Janice, again, unfortunately, she had her accident before I met her. So her, her, memories of what really went on before the accident were no longer anywhere near as crisp, <laughs> shall we say, as they were um, b before, uh, before she, before she had gotten injured. But um, that whole saga of Fox and, and the family and the garlic and the, you know, I, I, I it fascinates me because I, I, I want to believe it. I, I want to believe that somebody can live deep enough in a rural area like that. I mean, as a kid, my family lived up on a mountain and we owned the whole mountaintop. You know, we had seven farms on the top of this mountain spread out over, you know, six miles. It, it just was crazy. I mean, there was nobody else up there but us. And there were Bigfoot up there. Now, no, they didn't come down to the house and hang out. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure they visited through, you know, on a regular basis. I, I wanted something like that to be able to happen. But then... When they started speaking English, they kind of lost me. <clears throat> and asking for garlic and all that wonderful. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and it, it's funny, uh, what's his name? Uh, Igor Bertev went down there and he didn't see nothing for the week he was down there. Not a thing. And, and you wonder why. Um, but, I, you, you know, that's when I knew the, 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 the whoa, the Everton Project is there. This is a bit odd. But then here, here's a very, uh, another interesting thing. The folks that that Erickson had bought the ORV property from, he bought them out and he bought them a new place, gave them money to live mm -hmm. there. Um, the the diner we went to, they were talking about that. Everybody in the town had seen the, the pancake eater video, even though nobody had seen the pancake eater video. No, nobody had seen that video in the group. Or right. in the group or in the Bigfoot community, I should say. Yet, except a few. But the whole town had, because they were throwing parties every week. And they were running out of money really fast. And the next thing you know, that same very family approaches Tom Biscardi. And says, listen, if you give us $10,000, we'll let you investigate on our property. Because those Bigfoot followed us over followed here. Followed us. Yeah. yeah. And that at that point in story. time, you know the whole thing. The whole thing was garbage. And the funny thing is, the guy that brought us there, the guy that brought myself and Biscardi there, was a cousin of the folks that own the property. And the funny thing is, is when the Erickson Project hit, when they started talking a lot about it, the man above you there, Mr. Bennett, got a phone call from the same guy trying to you know, <laughs> elicit some kind of, uh, you know, Mula yeah. to to uh, get his nose into the ORV stuff, so the the money grab was still going on. Well, yeah, ten years later, that was the thing they 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 figured out. Uh, hey, you know, there's money in this, yep. <laughs> and and uh, apparently some of them got quite a bit of money out of it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there there was money in it. There doesn't appear to be very much money left in it anymore. But there no. there was a whole lot of money that exchanged hands for about fifteen years. Um, you know, from about two thousand five till this year. Um, you know, there's probably probably been a hundred million dollars changed hand. You know, in Bigfoot property bigfoot projects bigfoot right. equipment bigfoot you know it was like the falcon project oh what a oh disaster. yes the falcon project what a disaster that was i mean it was a good idea 
Don't get me wrong, but even a, a an air a lighter than airship that big is going to make too much damn noise to be silent through the air as they were talking about. But those people, they actually put men on the ground, promised support, and then abandoned them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's the that's the story people don't know was the people they put on the ground and then abandoned them. They, a lot of people don't know that story. Those guys have been really silent on that. I think yeah. maybe out of embarrassment. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, no, Kirk Brandenburg was one of oh, those okay. guys, and, and he talked. He talked. He talked a lot about it when it first happened. But it was. It was kind of like you know. It was kind of like tax retor- tax returns. You know, people just didn't care. Yeah. It just wasn't important enough for people to stay. I mean, the Falcon Project was dead. Apparently, they threw a big party with the five thousand dollars that they did collect. They threw a big party to try and fundraise more money but they didn't fundraise any money and the party cost more than the five thousand dollars that they had in funds to begin with so that's what really happened to the falcon right. project. so b is asking what happened uh, the falcon project was this project uh what was the guy's name william allen barnes oh my god i think that's right yeah i, and, I think that's and, right yeah and um it's been a while <laughs> he had um he had come up with this idea, and for a while he was working with Jason Valeni, who disappeared from the project after a, a few years. Um, he was working a little bit with uh, Bill Dranginis, who disappeared from the project. Um, late Bill Dranginis, uh, great guy, miss him. Um, who else? Uh, he was trying to get Meldrum on board. And I know in his conversations he was acting like Meldrum was on board, but I don't think Meldrum was ever committed to it. Um, yes, it was William Allen Barnes. Yeah, <laughs> fair yes, fact. Yeah, that is correct. And, he's, he's, and, he's been on and, the show. It's yeah, been and he was on the show in 2007 when we started the, the we started this podcast in 2006. He was on the show on 2007 talking about the Falcon Project, and then finally, ten years later, he's putting. Or I, what was that? 2016, 2017. They put the guys on the ground, and uh, it all uh, fell. 2016. Yeah, I was going to say. So so nine years later, they finally supposedly get all this money to put on the ground because he had all these Hollywood investors, and then the Hollywood investors weren't there. And and, and the they, sad thing was is they, they actually had two experiences while they were out there. Yep. Um, one of them close enough for them to actually make a sketch of it. And those tales are still kind of in the dark. Right. Uh, you, yeah. might to, you might want to dig up Kirk Brandenburg and have him on the show and ask yeah. him about you know, what think, went on there. Yeah, I think they had most of those guys sign an NDA. That might be the reason why. Right, but the project doesn't exist it's, anymore. Yeah, so. It's gone. Yeah, there's right. no so, need. You know, you got to remember with an NDA, an NDA is only as, as good as it's enforceable. Yeah. So if the project doesn't have any money to hire a lawyer to take you to court, they can stuff their NDA wherever the sun doesn't yeah. shine. <laughs> I mean, it, it really is uh, crazy that people sign these non-disclosure agreements just to be in a project or two like that. I mean, I, I get not wanting to release evidence beforehand but it's like it's the same reason i don't watch these you know the the oak island show it's like if they actually found anything on oak island i would know long before the show came out scientific right. discovery does not wait for reality show reveal right you Let know me, I, I, i'm gonna get back hold on to that thought because yeah. i want to get back to shows like oak <clears throat> island and stuff like that because i think there's a certain pertinence with all the shows going on nowadays with, with Oak, uh, Oak Island is a, because I can sit there and watch an episode and it an- annoys the hell out of my girlfriend because I can turn around and say, this is what's going to happen with that. <laughs> because they Almost all find like all scripted. the shows, all the shows, crypto, paranormal, UFO, whatever. Um, you know, they, they, they all have a certain formula they use and I'm going to try to, so I, I'm just, scrolling through and i want to make sure i hit some of the questions um you know somebody had asked i think it was uh uh oh what who asked the question here Be, um, quick witty uh, quick witty asked about polites what do you think of david polites is he wacko like you know, uh, 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 <laughs> well dave of course david's a nut job he's a con man um, I'll call him out, right? I have offered to openly debate David Pilates on any topic, anywhere, anytime. He wants to come to me because I'm not spending any time going to him. He was in San Francisco, never took me up on it. I mean, the guy is just awful. Sorry. You ask my opinion of the guy. That's no, my opinion of the guy. But I say and, the same thing know, on my show. I, I can say he's <laughs> keeping he's keeping bad company. 
Oh, he, well, I mean, he is. I mean, the, now, he's now the he's board of the Ketchum, you know, of the whole Ketchum debacle. Well, yeah, the, mean, the only time he's ever called me was to say I was wrong about Ketchum. Right, and, and then and, and well, he would point to Scott Carpenter as a oh, reference, right? <laughs> so, who who is another Ketchum supporter? But now he's rubbing elbows with Steve Isdell, how to hunt or how not to hunt Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, how not how not to hunt Bigfoot. And, and all right. of a sudden, Isdell has got you know Isdell made this comment about having a law enforcement officer back up his statements and stuff like that. Well, we all know who he had met the week before, and that was Polites. Right, um, Mister Mister, you need to leave the office because you're a douchebag. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, we, you know, talk- Scott Carpenter, and that's, that's Mr. I carry a camera on my back so I can see the cloak squatches, right? Or, or the blob squatches. Cause you know, right. Uh, yeah, well, I, his I, first, his first release with the plot watcher squatch was interesting. Yep. It, it was. I mean, uh, it, it, yeah. it just it, it 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 was there. It wasn't there. It would look like it came up from behind a tree. I'm not saying it wasn't somebody in some kind of a costume, but I just mean it, it was interesting. But then he just quickly just like went over the edge. And what's funny is I lived in Tennessee at the time. I was only like two hours from the Smoky Mountain National Park, and I contacted him on several occasions, going, "Look, you know, I'd I'd love to team up with you for a couple of weekends and maybe share some information of, you know, I've been all over the country, you know." watching i've heard lots of vocals could share lots of information with you you know why don't we make a you know a camp somewhere and and hang out for a couple of weekends and see what's up and nothing not even a response from the dude it was very very strange and then he went way off the totem pole with you know well you got to be you got to be a pure heart and pure mind to right. to to feel the sasquatches cuz you're never going to see them they're too fast yeah and you know what i would ask them define a pure heart well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, uh, you can't. Yeah. Well, how how are you saying I don't have a pure heart? You don't know who I am. How, how can you say I don't have a pure heart if you don't know who I am? Yeah, you know, you I'm, know I'm, that, that, that already, was that, that's always been my argument. Well, you gotta have a pure heart. Well, I have a pure heart. I don't mean him no harm. So yeah. how 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 am I not worthy? And and you summarily are. You know that, well, that's always that, been my my big argument with that. It, um. There's another question, too. There's a couple of actually questions. First is, um, well, first, a lowrider had a, a public service amount, and he goes, all NDA should come with a peach snapple. That's so right. We, we understand that. very. Joan, get me a snapple. Joan, get me a snapple. <laughs> uh, not just a snapple, but uh, peach a snapple. diet peach diet snapple. Diet peach. That's important, <laughs> yes. I'm on a, I've been on a water fast for 60 days. Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we're 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 going and and Stryfer's just bringing out all the good ones, <laughs> yeah. but um, which I love Stephen for that. Uh, he's just saying, "Tell it like it is, Reverend." <laughs> <laughs> um, so T- Timothy McLoone asks, "What what are your guys' opinions on the how to hunt guy? You mean the how not to hunt Bigfoot guy? And you mean how to hunt? Uh, you mean how to hunt YouTube clicks? Right? Well, yeah, that's a good one too. You know, I I noticed that." He never is on expedition, Bigfoot expedition. You never see him actually out in the field looking for Bigfoot. Never, not never once. Never heard so, of the guy, right? In he twenty years all, of doing this, you know, what twenty years of digitally doing this, I've never heard of the guy. Yeah, and then he has, he has all these anonymous stories, but then he likes dragging things into like, like the Mel Ketchum, and now they're demonic, and then another week they're 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 not of this earth, and uh, he. He's gone to posting other people's stuff, including hoaxed pictures up like he used a Mark Anders picture and a oh, pic, yeah. pic of a footprint and then says, hey, what do you think when you find this on your trail cam? You I, know? I, I think that your friend is trying to pull a prank on you and you're a douchebag. <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. that's what I think when yeah, I see exactly. that come off of a trail exactly. cam, especially since that picture didn't come off of a trail cam at all, ever. Yep. yep. Oh, and uh, I like the Mark Anders suit. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I like the suit. I just know it's a suit. It, it's it's just too clean. Well, yeah, it's it's not a it's not a wild animal. It's a dude in a suit. I mean, it's I just I, I want to know where the suit is now. Yeah, and then uh, oh, Sam says the Bluff Creek massacre hoax. Oh God! Oh, God. The <laughs> Bluff Creek massacre hoax starring M.K. Davis and the Bat Boxes. Um, yeah, so. Uh, M.K. Davis. What do we say about M.K. Davis? M.K. Davis started into the arena as a. Um, uh, uh, all right, we got to go even further back than that. Before there was M.K. Davis, there was a man named Mike Sells. 
And yes. Mike Sells was known for putting on monkey suits and videotaping himself and, and releasing suits, it. Yeah. yeah and, 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 and just all kind of, you know, anything that could appear to be a Bigfoot, take video of himself because the camera was always stable and they had always knew he was coming um, and then released it to the Bigfoot world as, you know, authentic Bigfoot video. Now, lots of people fell for it. Lots of people fell for it. Yep. Most of us didn't. And over the years that this went on and on and on and on with the same guy was repeated. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and his wife was communicating with the Bigfoot in the yard, leaving pictures. Yeah. yeah. And crayon drawings coming crayon back. Drawings, yeah. Because I've seen those. Right. Because I've been there. I've met Mike Sells. Well, after Mike died, yep. somehow MK Davis got a hold of Mike Sells videotapes. Yep. And start to make it. <laughs> and and he Excellent starts, drawing, Chris. He starts making uh, digital videos of the screen that the VHS videos are playing on and doing commentary about how, well, this could be a Bigfoot. Yeah, look how it jumps the fence and then gets on the bicycle and rides away. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's a Bigfoot, but, you know, you make up your own mind. Yeah. I'm MK Davis, you know, I'm Robin Leach and I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just to the point that MK Davis was yucky. The, the name was yucky. It was just everything it was involved with was yuck. And then he started doing stabilizations on the Bluff Creek film mm -hmm. that were like crazy good. Mm hmm. You know, he actually was contributing to making it far more believable than it ever was before, taking the shake out of it. I don't know where the guy got the, 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 the stabilization software for it. You know, those days you could steal a lot of stuff from the Internet. So, you know, I'm not saying that that's how it happened. But, you know, one might, you know, say that it could be the way it happened. But uh, then later on, he starts this. <clears throat> I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to tie it in. Uh, Stephen would be the guy that, that that would know, but he didn't put it in there. But basically, uh, the, the 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 other footage around the uh, the the Sasquatch being filmed at Bluff Creek popped up, and there was footage of John Green, and there was footage of of them tracking, and there was footage of a dog and some water. And MK started playing around with the colors and started changing everything red-hued, and all of a sudden, the puddle looked like a blood pool. And he put forth this theory that Robert uh, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were hunting Bigfoot down there in Bluff Creek and had shot Patty, pow, right through the thigh. And they were chasing her down when they were videotaping her. And that's what that little bubble in her thigh was, that everybody thought there was a, a defect in the muscle in Patty's thigh for years. Yep. You know, it actually ended up turning, up turning into being a digital anomaly from the copies that were made of them back in the day. Uh, you go to the earlier copies, it's not actually there. But that, uh, yeah, that there was a whole bunch of Sasquatch that had gotten killed and Patty had gotten away and they buried a bunch of them and there was a bunch of babies dead laying over in the bushes. I mean, it just got to be ridiculous again. It's like yeah. the guy's manic Bigfoot. You know, I don't want to bi bipolar Bigfoot, I guess, you know, up and down and up and down. And then after he does all of this, he goes back and does a 4K stabilization of, of the Bigfoot footage that of, of him walking across the creek. But that's even better than the last one that he did. And it's just like, oh, we're back on a high again, are we, MK? I mean, God, it's like dealing with a crackhead. It's it's pretty rough. I mean, how how you get from one to the other to the other, you know, all these assumptions. It's just, you know, I, you know, Chris, I have uh, I didn't tell everybody, but uh, I've been working as a a sketch artist, uh, you know, practicing as a sketch artist the last mm. several months, mm. and actually, a local police department actually commissioned me to do my first sketch. Mm. And I, I want to show everybody this. This guy actually robbed the local liquor store. And uh, this is what it is right there. It's not too bad. <laughs> he looks mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wanted, dead or alive. Guy with spiky hair. Recently drank milk. <laughs> but, but I, I, I do remember, though, the 
the Steve telling me about the crayon drawing communication and stuff. And yeah. that, that was, that was, that was rich. Okay. And, you know, I, I remember, <laughs> and it's kind of funny because I met this guy, he was in Fort Worth and apparently he had been working with Mike Sells and several others that had been doing this. And I remember him, he had this in a, in a, in a plastic Ziploc bag and he had a bunch of papers in there and he's like, Here, what's this? They're, they're, they're messages from Bigfoot. Messages? From and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I, I, I think I got a crown to be filled or something. Yeah. <laughs> something, you know, look, can look at the even... time. <laughs> Where'd the time go? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. I started looking through those things. And this guy would generally, he was like sweating looking at him. I mean, he's such a believer. And, you know, it, it, again, it, it's sad that we have people that do things like this. And they bring these people into it that, that want to believe so bad. Yeah. Um, um, that and, they'll believe almost anything. Right. And, um, you know, there have been several requests, though, to talk about your Bigfoot experience in the chat. Uh, well, okay, I, I, I could I could do that. Uh, picture yourself rural Pennsylvania along the, the the Allegheny Mountains, you know, the Appalachian Trail type of type type, type of situation um, is, is where our family was from. The, we we are actually from the poorest city in America called Johnstown, uh, Pennsylvania. It's outside of Pittsburgh, uh, way up in the mountains. It's in a bowl of a mountain. Had so a flood you, a long time ago. Oh yeah, a couple of big floods. Yeah, mm -hmm. back in the eighteen hundreds, there was a there was a wooden dam that broke, and then a couple of big dams. the 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 last big one was in seventy seven, and, and I was four years old. And mom and I sat on the back porch, uh, listening as the 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 uh, the flood came down the mountainside, as it ripped through the barbed wire mill first up on the hill, and then tore through houses and people. Mm -hmm and a little bit of farmland and then came down around the corner and tore through the train car mill mm -hmm. and finally came into a rest uh, as it broke out the oil tankers and lit on fire. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's one of my very earliest memories wow. of, of the world is, uh, is the, is the flood of 77. Um, wow. yeah, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's where we were from. And, um, you know, we, we, we dealt a lot of things in the mountains and we hunted. I mean, that's where our main staple of food came from. We, you know, we were game people and uh, we, we had some hunting property up in, uh, in Pennsylvania uh, or right, out, right outside of town, really. <clears throat> now, at nine years old, uh, my pap and I were going out to get a load of water. <laughs> and uh uh you know the, the water out there the springs will just literally just spring out of the will just spring out of the, the the hillside in a pipe you know somebody will go knock a pipe into the side of the hill and a, a fresh water spring will be there so you just yeah. kind of pull up next to it and fill up your jugs of water and go back to town and uh my pap was shaking and i asked him i was not shaking but just shaking he just wasn't right there was something wrong with him that morning it was real early and I asked him, I was like, you know, Pap, you know, what, what's going on? He's like, well, Jeffrey, do you, know, do you know what a Bigfoot is? You know, at nine, I knew what a Bigfoot was. I'd seen the Patterson film on those spooky shows with, you know, with, with, with Mr. Spock and, you know, and those guys. And uh, uh, looked it up in the school library and saw the saw the picture of the, of the ice pick next to the Yeti track and all of that. Read everything yeah. I could on it. You know, and I told him, I said, you know, I don't know what it is. But, yeah, I've seen I've seen about it. He says, well, you know, I. I kind of saw one of those. I was like, what do you mean you saw one of those? He goes, well, my pap was known for making a little bit of corn whiskey here and there and had a still up on the hill. And, you know, driving up to the hill, he said it crossed up in front of him across this trail. He kind of slammed on the brakes, didn't really know what it was, thought it was a weird bear and didn't think much of it. So he gets up to the still and gets everything running. You know, it doesn't take overnight to make whiskey. I mean, it takes a few days to actually get that stuff going going on. You know, you got to take time for the mash to get going and ferment and do all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I, he had said that something was just kind of in the shadows every night, just kind of bugging with him, just like cracking, cracking wood, just cracking big branches, and you know, just kind of making hooting noises that weren't owls. He said it sounded like an eight hundred pound owl. Just just bugged him until the last night it threw one of his old thump barrels into camp. Now, I don't know if you know what a thump barrel is, but it's a big oak barrel that they use to cool the whiskey down before it drips into the bottle. 
and they are soaked. I mean, they are alcohol soaked to the point that they are heavy, 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 heavy things. And it just come flying into camp and just cracked right into the middle of it. And he grabbed up his shotgun and sat with his back up against the shack for the night and waited for the sun to rise and decided the whiskey wasn't worth it. He put the fire out, <laughs> yeah. and opened up the tank and drove down the hill. And when he had gone back up to the site a couple of weeks later to, to start up again, there was a handprint in the middle of his brass topper. Now, what the topper is, it sits over top of the boil keg so that the condensates up over the top of it and goes to the spiral and comes down. And that's spun brass. I mean, that's heavy duty, thick stuff. I mean, you're not just, he said there was a, a giant handprint just kind of push into the middle of that topper and everything was just kind of kicked around camp. And that was my first real story of somebody actually encountering a Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't, I guess I was 16. It was the first year I was driving and uh, I'd gone up to camp probably 10 days before hunting season, uh, dressed in camo, no weapons, just kind of wanted to scout out where things were. I was a stock hunter. I didn't like to sit up in the, I didn't like to sit up into the, into the tree stands and wait for them to walk by. That was just too boring for me. I like to stalk and hunt and everybody else sat in the tree stands because I'd spook the damn deer up and they'd shoot them from the tree stands. So nobody really complained about it. So I drove up to the hunting camp and parked my car and was out walking around pretty much all day. Just didn't really see much. And there was a meadow in the backside of the property. So I figured they've all got to be laying back there in the meadow somewhere. So I started walking down the game trail, kind of quiet, you know, just looking around. And I hear just what sounds like a big crashing buck coming through the brush, coming along the side of the meadow. Now, the meadow was out in front of us and it was coming along the woodland in along parallel to the meadow so uh, yeah. it was either a predator I, who knew what it was so i kind of scrouched down between this tree and this bush and i like again i'm all in camo but i don't have any weapons on me i'm just kind of sitting there waiting for a big buck to walk out and out steps this big seven foot plus tall ape thing just as plain as day just mm. proud as one big step two big steps he was out of the woods Three big steps, he was halfway down the hill, and on the fourth big step, he was on the game show. Now, he never looked at me. He was going somewhere. He had shit to do. and But he it was obviously, he was kind of scanning. You know, he wasn't really, he never turned and looked at me, so I never got a full-on side of the face. But I got the whole profile of the head and the minus of the hmm. neck. and the, the way the body was was real, it was a barrel at the top and then it kind of narrowed down into this real solid core at the waist yeah. and then opened up into these great big thick thighs and these really long weird legs mm -hmm. and like i said hanging between them was a set of nuts the size of your fists man i mean they just <laughs> didn't see no penis didn't see none of that i just there was these great big lumps hanging right out front going right down now, i don't know if you've ever seen a, a gorilla but a gorilla's got balls the size of your fists with no penis hanging out of it. So, I mean, it's just it's just the way the case was. He turned up the other side of the hill, reached up, and it was weird. He reached up into the tree line this way and grabbed a tree with one hand and reached up into the tree line and grabbed a tree with the other hand and pulled himself up into the tree line. And three big steps crashing again. He was gone. And yeah. six or seven big steps, I heard nothing. Yeah. And that was it. I mean, the whole encounter lasted 25 seconds, and I was 25 yards. Hmm. You know, I mean, that's – but that is enough. This guy, I peed myself a little. I'll be honest. I was scared. I was a 16-year-old kid. You know, I, I, did, I didn't really believe that Pap saw a Bigfoot, but, you know, what, what do you do when Bigfoot shows up? He right. peed, you pee yourself a little bit. <laughs> uh, um, I decided that I was no longer interested in what was up in the meadow anymore. And I kind of backed out the other way, got in my car and, and, and drove home. And that was, you know, that was the, that was my very first Bigfoot sighting. Um, and it was full on, man. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And he's all oh, Bigfoot don't exist. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. You don't have to believe he believes in you. What are you going to yeah. do when he shows up? That, that's all, you know, yeah. that's, that's all I'm going <laughs> to say. What are you going to do when he shows up? Uh, I, that started it all. I mean, from that weekend on, man, anywhere I thought there were Bigfoot, uh, any weekend I could be in the woods, I was in the woods. Well, Jeff, I mean, I know it's been a long time ago, man, but can you remember feeling any sort of weird sensations with your ears? 
uh, when you had that sighting? I know it, it, it's like well, no, the fear, to... the fear itself. I remember the fear. Mm. I mean, it, it it overtook me. I mean, there was no doubt. I was a hundred percent fearful, and at that time, I wasn't afraid of nothing. That same year in October, I went to a haunted house uh, at a firefighter's uh, 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 fundraiser mm -hmm. and got spooked out in a strobe room and took a fire axe from a firefighter. <laughs> okay, that same exact year. So I, you know, I, I wasn't afraid of nothing, but that thing, the fear, the feeling of all of that, yeah, that hair raising, that right. just ringing of the body, saying you don't want to be here right now. Right. There was no doubt about it, but I think it was a hundred percent natural in me. I don't believe that the Sasquatch was doing that because he never saw me. Yeah. If he would have looked at me and then, you know, right. got, got the ring into the face or the, you yeah. know, the, 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 the whole, the whole, what do they call that? That infrasound. I, infrasound. Yeah. No, no, no. My whole thing is with the infrasound is, is, is this, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I'm not saying that they're not capable of using it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's not detectable in their, audio clips that we have what mm -hmm. i am saying is is it ain't knocking nobody to the ground it right. ain't making nobody stupid and it ain't really doing nothing to you because they're basing all of this on tigers and elephants mm -hmm. right. let me ask you this how many tigers or elephants have ever killed anybody with infrasound <laughs> no I well don't. none that i know of right i mean yes like i said when that tiger roars and that infrasound comes out, but it's not the infrasound that scares the living crap out of you. Yeah. It's some great big teeth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and the fact that he's going to come eat you. That's, yeah. that, that really instills that fear, you know, deep. It's, it's, a, it's a carnal. I don't want to, because that thing gave me the, the impression that it had it seen me and wanted to, it could rip my arms off and beat right. me to death with it. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's that really. The fact that you know it, it probably didn't notice you might be the the reason why you didn't have any weird sensations too, because a lot of people don't realize this, but I don't think you can just go out in the woods and expect to run up on one uh, because you got its number. You know, I think most of the sightings that happen are just by chance. It's like hundred percent. You know, yes. right? I would, I would totally, Ooh, what, what are you totally, doing there? Totally agree with that right. one hundred percent. Um, you know, two seasons ago, I was up at uh, Bluff Creek with uh, with Jonathan Sasquatch, who does the uh, Western Bigfoot exploration. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had done a real light trip. He just brought some backpacking gear and I just actually crashed in the truck that we came in. And uh, first night, you know, normally on first nights of expeditions, it's all quiet. You've made so much noise coming in there. You stink to high heaven. Your truck stinks like gasoline. You're just dripping everything everywhere. You're peeing everywhere. There's just so much human stink around that nothing can really get past that wall of Ugh, no one wants right. to be around you right now. It takes a whole day for that to kind of waft off. And if you're careful after that, you know, you kind of get back to normalcy after that. Uh, the second night that we were out there after moonrise on moonrise was about two 30 in the morning. Uh, we got two solid alert whoops. Now that wasn't anybody else around. We were the only ones that the party, it was after the 4th of July. It was the beginning of August. We had already, already been all around the area for those couple of days. We had been up to onion Lake. We had been, you know, down to the over, over top of the kill of the, of the, uh, of the, the, the Bluff Creek site. We'd right. been up and down. nobody was out there camping. There was nobody else around us. And at 2.30 in the morning, it was whoop, whoop. Hmm. Now, both of us heard it and both of us got woke up by it. And neither one of I didn't get out of the truck because if they were coming up on camp, I wanted to look through the mirrors or look around or see them, you know, walk past the truck. I, I just kind of right. laid there and watched the mirrors in the mirrors that I could. And he just kind of. His his tent isn't all that thick to begin with, so he just kind of peered around his tent for about 45 minutes, and then there was nothing. It was just dead silence. So I finally got out to the truck and took a pee, and again, it was just dead, 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 dead silence. Um, <laughs> it was very, very strange because it's the same type of alert whoop that I have gotten in the Sierras that I've gotten in the Tennessee mountains that I've heard in the Smokies that I've heard in the Appalachians that I've heard in lower Georgia that I've heard in upper Florida. Mm. 
And if you watch some of these chimp troop movies, documentaries on TV, you'll you'll see, you know, the the core of the chimp troop is in the middle, and then they've got these little crews that kind of run around the outside of them as you know as as guards pretty much and anytime they see something they start to whoop and it it was very much like that they were like these things were coming up and all the berries we were eating berries in camp there were huckleberries fresh all over the place i mean it was ridiculous how much food there was literally yeah. laying right there in camp with us and i think they were just coming up the creek eating early morning you know because sunrise right. is coming and yeah. just whoop whoop Hey, yeah. what's that pop <laughs> you know and next thing you know there's they're, they're running into a car there because I, there there isn't a whole lot of camping that goes on down there you know those those creatures probably roam through blub creek 50 weeks a year without worrying too much about running into people well maybe not that often but 40 right. weeks a year easily right so you know it, it was just it, it it's like that you know the 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 vocalizations of bigfoot we have a lot more accounts of these days but you know there's been so much of the woo the woo people out there now stealing them and like making adjustments to them and claiming them as their own i was there was just you know the then the hoaxers group just last couple of weeks ago somebody was doing that it's like we know where these sounds come from we're gonna track them down yeah why you try to hide you know where the style you know the, the, the i just i don't i just don't get it I mean, there is so much evidence out there that it's easy enough to to weed through it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times, well, Steve and I have both seen that too, Jeff, because a lot of times some of the new evidence that pops up has been stolen from somewhere else. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> from the, a long the time ago. Yeah. The, the problem is, is every couple of years you get a new crew coming in. They have no idea what's left, what's right. Yeah. And even today, I, I saw in one of the groups somebody posting the Sean Bannon uh, video of uh, remember those uh, the 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 creature of the sequoias. Oh, and, God. and people are saying, oh, well, yeah, that looks the disco dancing. And, and, yeah, and then there's there's people <laughs> saying, oh, looks real to me, looks real to me, looks real to me. And I, uh, folks, this is the Sean Bannon hoax. <laughs> and now, if you go to his YouTube site, you will see that he says that they are not real. Uh, yeah. Originally, when they we know before that was all tracked out, I like that. I like the the jumping one, the where it had jumped down, you know, a good well, twelve yeah. or foot, twelve or fifteen foot drop down in front of those sequoias. I really like that video. I was like, the hair's not right. Yeah, well, to me, it's always the sequence. Do you think if something like that really happened, it would show up on YouTube first? Right. right. Yeah, and that that's the big thing. You see these people, you know. Uh, now uh, with live streaming, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, just uh, a question. Robin Rose had sent me. Um, I saw the video. I watched the video while Jeff yeah. was talking. I don't know if people could me see too. me looking up. <laughs> um, in my summation, is it's not moving. Uh, it's a shadow of some sort. Uh, when you have something that long for that time length of time, and it doesn't move, it doesn't. You can't detect any movement. It's no. an inanimate object. Even when the guy in the video said, "Look, it's moving," it's it wasn't. Moving. Moving. It wasn't moving. No, no. no. The, the camera was moving. No. Sorry. Uh, well, you know, it happens. It so, looked good. It looked good from a distance, but <clears throat> if it's going to stand there for half hour in one spot, it's probably. It's Not probably still there. Oh, you mean you mean like you mean like non blinky? Oh, this was just a blob squatch off in the distance. It was just this dark. Oh, way! Well, I mean, we're talking way a off. mile away. Oh, yeah, that's like the yeah. Facebook group uh, burnt out stumps that look like Bigfoot. Yeah, hard hard to say. And you know, supposedly it was a twelve foot tall Bigfoot because of the, the size. Oh God, I love those. Look it's, at that tree shadow. It's a twelve uh, foot Bigfoot. No, but thanks I, for bringing us to bring. Thanks for bringing that to our attention, Robin. Because yes. you know that's going to make the rounds now, and people are going to say, "Oh, look at the Sasquatch." No, it's not moving. Sorry. Well, if, it's, if there was somebody that lived near that area, uh, it would be great if you could go back and do like a follow up photo or mm -hmm. video of the same area. And I think it's up. Uh, I think they, on the video I watched, they said it was Pigeon Mountain uh, near Alberta, right along the Alberta Highway or whatever number that is. I don't know. But uh, if somebody could get a picture, you know, a follow up, that would help. You know, if it's still there today, then probably wouldn't have been, but, you know. But if it's gone, hey, you know, that could add a little credibility. Fo fo follow up. Follow up is everything. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'll I give you a good example of that. We went and investigated up there at the Browns property uh, when I was still with David a few years back. And, uh, you know, I always uh, there's there's definitely foliage between the camera, between the thermal camera and the, the subject of the Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. It's definitely framing it in a way that it shouldn't be. OK, so it's mm -hmm. actually something else giving the cast that it looks like a barrel chest and a head. But that's because there's a tree branch in front of yeah. them, you know, that's blocking things back and forth there. And there's a trail that actually runs right down where that creature was standing. And they kept telling us that, that they uh, that that nobody, you know, that the cows didn't use that trail. There were never any cows on that trail. Trail now, cows never used that trail. Trails, cows. I, no, that trail was too thin for cows. Cows don't go down that trail. And uh, we set up our we set up our hammocks on the cow side of the of the fence that night on purpose because we kind of wanted to invade the Bigfoot space. You know, it's like, you know, well, nobody ever does that. I'm like, well, good. Then we're going to go do that. You know, you know, what is going to hurt? We're going to hang from the, our hammocks from the trees for a couple of days. It's not going to hurt anything. And uh, it's three o'clock in the morning, I get this feeling that I'm being stared at. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I pull my pull my hammock down over my side and I look and some bitches eyeballs staring at me from like 30 feet away. I'm like, and then I look and there's two more and there's, <laughs> there's two more and there's two more. There's a hundred head of cattle and they all go right down that trail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that happened to us one night where you thermals are great because we were, I remember walking up this dark Vermont trail and we hear these these vicious dogs barking like what the hell we round the corner and uh and here's all these glowing eyes looking at us as we shine the flashlight and then you know like oh, is, it, is it a pack of coyote or, or, or wolves or, or what and then we hear Meh. <laughs> <laughs> okay it's safe let's go <laughs> I'm yeah. sitting at I'm sitting at, at camp in the Sierras and the guys come back after riding quads for a couple hours out looking for tracks. And they're like, Well, we either just saw a volcano explode or a UFO and we're not sure which. I'm like, Well, what do you mean you either saw a volcano explode or a UFO? <laughs> you don't know which. Was there lava involved? He's like, No. I said, Well then Ash? maybe it was a UFO. Yeah. Um, apparently, they had gotten up on the hill, and instead of uh, instead of doing a cow lease that year, they did a sheep lease. And they got up in the middle of all these sheep that were around them that they didn't know about, came around the corner and spooked them, <laughs> and they all ran. 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 Oh, and mm. he, he swore that it looked like a rocket ship, like a UFO taken off out of the out of the meadow and going up into I'd be like, space. volcano, excuse me, I have to pack. Yeah, it's time to go. Um, I believe Trucky is that way. Down there, right? <laughs> oh, and, and Quick Witty is throwing the silver herring again. The Yowie from photo from the 30s is the real deal. I wish we knew. Oh, God. You know, I just I just watched a TV show. Now we, you know, we wanted to get back on that TV, that, that TV show thing because it's, you know, we're already 50 minutes almost into this thing over. Um I watched that Travel Channel show with uh, the girl Ryder from that used to be part of the Josh Gates uh, okay. show. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, the Legend of Bigfoot, I guess, is what they were calling it. And you know, one of the stories they went and investigated was in Oregon, oh. um, and somebody said at an old ski lodge in the '80s there were three Yeti living in a in an abandoned cabin, not Sasquatch, not Bigfoot. But most definitely Yeti. Okay. Now, of course, there's a lot of questions as to how would a Yeti get here? Why would a Yeti be in Oregon? Why, why, why would a Yeti live inside of a cabin? Not Bigfoot, not Sasquatch, but Yeti. Sure. So they take the guys from Sacramento who do the eDNA, the water tests, up there. And, uh, you know, they do a bunch of snowshoeing around and you know they don't find much of anything of course this was 1986 <laughs> when when the when the sighting had occurred but they're they're going to go investigate it now i guess cuz they have money to spend um and and i like the i like the eDNA guys because the the story will, will finish out in a good way but you know they 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 take a whole bunch of water samples and what they do is they run these water samples through filters 
And then they collect the particles inside of those filters and they run them for whatever DNA they can pull out of them. Once upon a time, you kind of had to know what DNA you were looking for so that they knew which primers to use to extract the DNA out of the sample that you have. Now they have these core samples of primers that they can just run the DNA through and it'll spit out everything that was in there. I mean, right. we really are coming into a cool time of DNA, but yeah. They, they so they run these filters and they take them back into the lab and they're like, well, you know, we got the usual stuff. We got fish and, you know, we got critters and, you know, we got this and we got that. But, you know, we didn't see any signs of bear. And I was like, well, it's freaking Oregon. You're on 10 feet of snow. Of course there's no bear, dumbass. They're hibernating. Mm -hmm. I mean, where would there be bear at this time of year? You right. freaking moron. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, now, when they came up, they did an investigation up here in the Sierras um, at, at what we call Site B, um, where most of our tracks and vocals and just evidence really come from. Our primary site, where the kill site actually is, isn't really even the primary site where we get most of the evidence from. That's just the event site. Site B is actually a couple of miles away, a little bit lower in altitude on a different mountain site. Um, <laughs> but or, I'm sorry, on a different side of the mountain. Uh but they, they took them down there to site B where they had a sighting up on a ridge line uh, where they had kind of chased it down. And those same guys had done water filter samples through the eDNA in the lower tributaries where all the lakes drain out of. And when they pulled those results, they said, yeah, that they had not only found human, but they had also found human like DNA. It was as close to human as a chimpanzee. It was like 97.9 or 98%. It definitely was not human. There was enough primer differences for them to say that eh, we're not sure what this is. And that's the kind of evidence that we need more of. We need yep. more of that super close to human DNA that's not human DNA because that's what the old primers couldn't get past. You know, you heard Todd Disso. Well, I've never seen any Bigfoot DNA. All I've ever seen is human DNA. Well, Todd, Todd Disso tell, chances are you've seen Bigfoot DNA and just classified it as human and passed over it like the douchebag that you are. But, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> This is uh, uh, revealing. I know, really revealing, Nate. I, <laughs> you're not going to have any friends left after this one. Remember, these are the thoughts of the Reverend Jeff Kelly and not the thoughts of Steve Calls or the Squatch D TV show. That is correct. There you <laughs> go. You so we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give you my own, my, my own, uh, <laughs> my own disclaimer. You can put that at the beginning of the show if you want to. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the chances are that these that these DNA guys have actually probably seen real real Bigfoot DNA and just you know passed over it as human or too as, human to be. As the Smithsonian probably has some Bigfoot bones that are just unclassified and have no idea what they are. <sighs> you know, that's that's that is a good question because you know you would think in antiquity of even in the United States from the time that we became a lumber mill for Europe because that's all we really were. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, there were far more Bigfoot in the world than there are now. Um, I, I, I do I do still feel that there are Bigfoot all across America from, you know, the, 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 the middles of, of, of Florida through the Ocala National mm -hmm. Forest and all through the swamps uh, of the south, clear through every mountain range between here and California. But I would say that most of them probably still live in Western in Western Canada where nobody lives. Well, you know, the other thing about bones and this is what gets me is every once in a while, this is one of the most asked questions you ever see amongst Bigfoot community members, especially those who are new. Do you think Bigfoot bury their dead? And my answer to that was always no, because if we buried their dead, we would have found some of their bones eventually. Because burying protects the bones from scavengers. You know, you put a deer out in the middle of a field, it disappears within a couple of weeks. Everything. The bones are scavenged. The, you know, so if you bury the bones, then the, the scavengers can't necessarily scavenge them. Which is why every so often... Um, Cameron Young. <laughs> they eat their dead. That could be too. But, uh, um, you know, like... Especially like in Albany, they had to stop. Uh, they, they were doing a dig. They had to do stop in Albany, New York. Now, mind you, Albany is one of the oldest cities in the country. Um, they had to stop because they found uh, a, a Native American burial ground. And, you know, there's the bones. But never are they, well, we, we discovered this bones we can't figure out. No, there's been times they, they found Homo erectus, which did bury their dead. Right. But but well, it, that, it, to me, the evidence seems that it would go against that. Well, then you, well, you got to think back, though. Um, you know, what it, what is a Bigfoot? Now, mm -hmm. for me, 
I, I honestly think that Bigfoot is the fifth chimpanzee. I mean, through the great ape scale, you have chimpanzees, you have Billy Apes, you have Bonaboo, you have humans. And it would be just logical to think that Sasquatch would be, you know, along that same chimpanzee line because sure. everything really that came later really has been. Um, but it, does it fall into what that paranthropus is? Now, what, if you don't know what a paranthropus is, mm-hmm. all along human development, all the way back to Homo naledi. Now, Homo naledi is that little three foot monkey thing that went south instead of going north and carried torches and buried its dead in a cave. Yep. Now, mind you, we didn't find any of them for millions of years. Yep, very true. So if Bigfoot buried their dead in caves, it very well could be that we're yeah. not going to find them for millions of years either. Exactly. But going going back to the point that, you know, going all the way back to Homo naledi, who did bury their dead and use torches and fire, which, you know, which is very strange for a monkey type creature. Um, they were there were these upright walking, robust boned, thick haired, short necked creatures called Paranthropus. And Paranthropus literally means beside us. They're not homo erect. They're not homo sapien line. They are something else. But through homo erectus and Neanderthal and Heidelbergensis and all of those guys, there was also a parenthesis species that followed along all of their lines as well that led to us. So where we get to homo sapien in the end is the Sasquatch not necessarily the parenthesis species that was started from the chimpanzee line all those years ago, just, you know, uh, What's the word? Darwinism, you know, just yeah. evolving, you know, alongside of the Homo sapiens to the point that now we've destroyed most of the habitat that they want to be in because we're constantly in there molesting it. Yeah. You know, now, a couple of more questions are popping through. Sure. So I'm going to take OT's question first because it's more in the line of what we're talking about right now. And then I'm going to get to quick witty's question. Um. You know, and I haven't, I, I have heard neither, but uh, has the good Reverend Captain ever heard of Bigfoot using <laughs> fire or tools? And he addressed you properly, Reverend Captain? Yes, that's right. I believe that's the way that goes. I think, yeah, that's for sure. Thank you, sir. Um, it, no, I, you know, I, some stories of the Native Americans relate that they'll use spears um, or that they'll use, you know, hatchets or knives or that type of thing. But usually when you when you when you punch down on those stories, those are more of what they call the other tribes more yeah. than they're actually talking about, you know, Big, Bigfoot, Bigfoot or, or Sasquatch or that type of thing. Um, and of the of of the cast record that we have of Bigfoot hands, the knuckle print and, you know, the Bosberg snow print, the thumb doesn't seem to be in such a place that it would be adaptable to napping. And that's what it would have to. I mean, it's not forging. They're definitely, you know, they, they don't have, you know, iron forges out in the woods, banging away, making tomahawks. So that's not happening. So if they are using tools, there, I mean, will a creature like that pick up a rock to hammer something with it? Sure. Yeah. Chimpanzees do. I mean, you know, the, the, stick, the, the basic, yeah. right. The basic organic tool use. Absolutely. I would, I would say that a Sasquatch would be way smart enough to pick up a branch and beat you to death with it. I, I, I don't think he'd have a problem with it. You know, the, the, the Billy apes are called lion killers for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Bluff Creek project has gotten pretty much every living animal in Bluff Creek, even the endangered Humboldt Martin, even the rare Reverend Jeff on trail cameras. <laughs> Not a single Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. I can be a little, a little frustrating. Disheartening. Yeah, frustrating. Disheartening. disheartening. But I've yeah. seen them, Stephen, so I don't no. have to worry about catching them on your trail Look. cam. And let's be honest, all of your trail cams, every single one of them that you have, Needle you're still only haystack. looking at a postage stamp. Needle in a haystack. Yep, you're looking yeah. at a postage yeah. stamp at a forest, I, my friend. I, I always say that too. Let, and, let me, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. no. I was just gonna say, you know, they're 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 still having them down at eye level and looking at you know things coming up and down trails, rather right. than putting them up in trees and having them take a picture every five seconds and taking things from right. a distance. You know, right. you don't take you don't get pictures of a Sasquatch by randomly putting up cameras on trees that have never seen footprints of a Sasquatch. Mm. First, you find tracks. Then you put on a camera to see what leaves those tracks. Have there but, been but, any tracks in the places that you guys are putting up cameras? At one time, 1967, have there been any more tracks in that area since you started putting up those cameras there? That's what you have to ask yourself. Yeah. Are your cameras in the right place? And, and are they being utilized properly? If you do get a picture, is anybody going to believe it? 
Yeah. Um, I think from that group, it would it, it would get some, I, some I, interest. I, I, I would still say it's going to come to scrutiny. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I mean I, I, Nova I, Trant yeah. said that if you had a Bigfoot body, you'd have to drag it from conference to conference so that, sure. that scientists would actually believe you. Um, right. You know, and I, I don't want to open up any 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 wounds or, any, any, or anything like that, but like the Vermont trail cam photo, you know, we sent that to a scientist. You know, people say, oh, it's an owl. But we took the shadowing did not look right to me. I, I, I know about the parallax view. I sent it to a scientist and scientist says it can't be a bird. Look at the leading edge shadow. It's not something close to the camera. It's something on the ground. Yeah. You know, what does that leave you then? Guy in a ghillie suit? Well, does that make any sense? Number one, it looks like no ghillie suit I've ever seen. Uh, you know, they, they, it wasn't hunting season. There was no there was no firearm there. Um, and it's the guy's front yard and it's clearly and is it, marked. And it's dark. Yeah. I mean, who's going to be in the dark freaking taking apples off the ground of some random guy's house. I mean, that's yeah. just, yeah. that's where you yeah. get your eyes shot. And then, and then you look at the, the area. Yeah. Yeah. 10 months earlier, there was a sighting, not nine tenths of a mile from the yeah. house. And, yeah. you know, even a couple of years later, there was a sighting, not five miles from the house. So. Are people going to believe it if you get one anyway? It doesn't matter. It's going to, if you get one, people are going to say it's, it's something else. It's this, it's that, it's whatever. And the big conundrum is this, is, you know, there's, there's that big killer, no kill debate that's always been out there. And that's mm. caused huge rumbles. I mean, straight up, like, <coughs> I'll come to your house and kill you if you kill a Bigfoot type of rumbles. I mean, seriously <laughs> demented people over some of this stuff. Um, but if you don't kill it, say you want to take it alive, where are you taking it? Yeah. Who has the facilities to take care of an eight foot primate that you don't know the dietary needs of, that you don't oh. know the security needs here, here, of? Here's what happens there. Hello, honey. Yeah, I'm coming home with, with something. Yeah, just do me a favor. Uh, uh, yeah, put down a lot of uh, newspaper. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, right. right. Make sure that the neighbor cleans his pool because we're going to have to give him a bath. <laughs> Oh, oh, but I mean, I, you know, I mean, I I would like to see one. I, I would like to see one captured. But first, we have to prove that they're there. And you know, like I, I saw I saw something go by in the in the chat box about uh, about the uh, uh, Area X guys. You yes, know, and, yeah. and, and, and you know those those guys. I really I really had a lot of I had a lot of respect for those guys in the beginning. I really did until you know here we are five six years into it, and there's no real evidence coming out of it at all. But there's still huge claims that are coming out of it. Like there was one one claim that I heard that where one night they had a hundred rocks thrown onto the roof of of their of their cabin out there that, that's on the location. Well, if you've got a hundred rocks that were touched by Bigfoot, you can get DNA off of them. Yeah. Or you should sense. have some, or you should have some track evidence. You should have something. There should be something close enough for, you know, they got to be close yeah. enough to hit the damn place. And they were, they said they were on the roof of it. So, I mean, it right. wasn't like they disappeared, you know, it wasn't dust or something or mud balls that were being thrown. Yeah. I mean, they, they literally had collected them all, but they hadn't, uh, they, they hadn't really, you know, there, there was no, nothing ever came of it. And I, and they, they manned it so well. I mean, they had it going 24 seven. They had mostly credible people there. There were some lunacy, you know, the people that were involved with it, but they were pretty much just told to collect evidence and shut up. Um, but, you know, here we still are now. And what, what really do we have out of, out of area X stories? Yeah. Hmm. Same stories that we get out of anywhere else that's running a long time project. Like I heard a story about uh, uh, <coughs> it was told to me by the person who was involved with it, and I still don't believe it. Uh, uh, when they were up with uh, the Olympic project, um, you know, they they were out with the Olympic project for an expedition for a week, and uh, they they had been hiking up along their normal you know trail cam route, and it was nighttime, and they got into a conversation of Bigfoot grunts back and forth with a Bigfoot. Now this was, this was one of these famous adventurer people who might've been a mailman in the UK. If you want any questions as to who it might've been, um, you know, and they were talking about how they were grunting and, and, and calling back and forth to each other. Uh, and, and, you know, this amazing interaction with a Sasquatch went on. There's Rod Dupree. He's always in the place to be. Um, <laughs> and my first question was, um, well, where's the audio? Yeah. Right. Well, nobody was running a recorder at that time. I'm like, well, no, well, no one was running video either. You don't, you don't have any 
thing to uh, to yeah. to verify yeah. that this incredible Sasquatch inter- interaction went on with anybody? I'm like that. You guys are professionals, right? I mean, you guys are pros at this. I mean, seriously. I mean, nobody has any kind of anything to say that this actually went on besides when, whenever the 2012. Whenever hit that vehicle out out in the uh, parked out on the on the roadway when we were doing it we had audio of it it was going yeah. overnight yeah. always yeah it's the basics 101 sadly for me my last trip up the bluff creek uh, i hadn't updated the firmware in my video or my digital recorder and it stopped at eight hours and uh we got those whoops at eight hours and 20 minutes and then, <laughs> then, yeah that, that i mean i mean you know Dang that it. happens well, I, I had it running i just yeah. didn't know i'd never run it for eight hours or more i was yeah, never yeah. asleep but, for but, but there's a big hours. there's a big difference between a couple of whoops and saying that you know oh well you know okay our our cabin got attacked with a bunch of rocks and right. we didn't have ca- audio going i would avoid the embarrassment and not say anything about it all let's see if it happens again and we'll run the recorders you know, yeah. well, 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 at least Ron Moorhead has the interaction of whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where do you stand on the Sierra sounds? I mean, do you have a, do, you, do you want to put an honest opinion out there? or are you Well, just... here's the thing. And I, and I say this with all the old evidence, Patterson Gimlin film included. Um, the story sounds really good. Uh, I heard the audios. I was impressed with them in my earlier years. Now, as I've gotten older and more into the field and been out there and all that other stuff and over the years, I have questions because I don't ever have ever heard those sounds anywhere else but the Sierras. No, no, not me, the Sierras. Just at that location. Right, 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 right. You know what? The, the Sierra <laughs> right. sounds. I've never heard them anywhere else except the whoops and then that tree knocking, maybe the clapping. But the really robust ones, the samurai chatter, that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I've heard people say, well, I've heard that. But I, I don't know if, if that's just their mind fooling them or, you know, they, they've they heard that before and they, or they heard it and say, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Because I'll tell you, doing what I've done professionally for years, you can describe something. I've done it before. I've described somebody completely wrong. Yeah, that was the guy. Okay, I, 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 I know you didn't. I know you didn't see anything. You see, but people want to attribute something right. so badly to something else to help validate their experience <laughs> that they will get suggestions from listening to. Just like uh, somebody had put this, and, and this was really this blew me away. As now, a lot of people know, I I do paranormal investigation as well. This blew me away. I, I somebody had put this this uh, uh, video out. And it said, and you hit the play and just, it says, say this phrase or this phrase, look at this phrase. And this is what you'll hear. You look at this phrase. This is what you'll hear. And my God, it was working. It would say one phrase. It was the same clip. So then what I did was, okay, let me break this into two more. And I took half of that phrase and mixed it with half of that phrase, the back half of that phrase. And sure enough, it was saying those things, even though they made no sense at all. Right. So it wasn't saying anything at all. It was right. just noises that were recognizable almost as something, right. much like much like the Matrixing or you know right. paradelia. Yeah, it's like audio paradelia, basically. Yeah, people um, people matrixing. see faces and everything because that's what your brain is trained right. to see. You know, so I, me a- me as a paranormal investigator, when I looked at that, I automatically said, "Wow!" And and, and now I'm going to break into those TV shows like we're talking about. Because I had seen a show, it was uh, uh, the, the Alaska Triangle with a- Adam Davies incl- included, one of, the, one of the people that's a regular on that show. Well, this had to do with a paranormal investigation. And, you know, they said, well, they heard this, it said this. And then here's the other guy saying, no, actually, it said that. And it's kind of funny because at that very moment, I inverted the last word in the thing and I heard something completely different than anybody and i said i heard that clear as day it makes no sense you know i want you cow or something like that or i want you you know right wh- whatever and i i just changed it with, with the other word it said and, and it said it in my mind i said i go pause that for a second let's play that back now i want you to think this is what it's going to say i want blah, boom. play it in front of my girlfriend she goes my god it did say that so 
way back in the day there was there was on the art bell show there was the fellow that used to do reverse speech yes and he would record children and then he would invert it and it would you know you would actually he says now if you listen it's gonna say what are you doing david and then he'll play it in reverse and you'll hear what is it what are you doing david but that isn't what it said because i went back and cut some of just the out and put them in line and listen to me and say shit yeah. Your mind made it say what he's telling you it said. Yeah. And just like the shows on TV, they, they kind of lead you towards all of that. And now I understand. It's like a magic while, trick. Now I understand while reviewing evidence with another researcher, we got into so many arguments over what it was saying, what this was saying. It was saying nothing. <clears throat> and that's yeah. the sad thing about it. it. To me, it just destroyed any EVP evidence that ever existed. I'm not saying that if you go and sit in the middle of a, of a graveyard at night with a digital recorder and record for 10 hours that you won't hear some weird spooky crap. Not saying that at all. I'm just saying it ain't talking to you and it doesn't know your grandma. Right. You know, you know what was really weird? I was at, uh, what the hell was it? Um, uh, the Genesee Poorhouse. It's called, uh, not Waverly Hills uh, Sanitarium. But anyway, um, I was at this very famous sanitarium. Ghost Adventures has been there. Ghost Hunters has been there. I was in their boiler room, and I all of a sudden, I, and I'm doing live time because I got myself plugged in, and I hear this little girl's voice very clear, and I have it recorded, and it is so clear. And all it said was, Dan, and then followed up with two whispers, Dan, Dan. Ooh. I couldn't explain it, Can yeah. ex especially the little girl, because there was nobody there that was under like 21 22 23 so there was no way this could have been a little girl's voice there it was really so oh. there there is some hope but when you get so much of this now i'm gonna this is what i want i seem to see a formula with all the paranormal shows which really is kind of disheartening you see the the hollywood and, and get me if i'm wrong hollywood likes to make out that we all like to leave as viewers having more questions than answers. Yeah, they think that. They that think ain't that. true. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true at all, but they think that. Yeah. Because they like, well, like we talked about Oak Island, and we, we said, okay, oh, what's that? Oh, my God. I go, watch, it's going to be something stupid like a button. <laughs> oh, we found this button. Big whoop. Yeah, people have been going there since like the 1430s. Oh, we found this piece of leather. Big whoop. <laughs> Big I mean, whoop. And then they're showing it like this is some big deal. It's no big deal. Look, I mean, I love the fact that they're finding shafts and stuff that go into the middle of the man-made swamp. I mean, it's cool and all, but damn, dude, get to one. something. Yeah. You found one coin. Get a LIDAR unit out there and, like, let's get some pinpoints well, going, yeah. man. I mean, Thank come. you, Mike. It was Rolling Hills. Thank you, Mike. It was Rolling Hills Sanitarium. Rolling right Hills, yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, the, all those ghost things got ruined for me when, uh, when, when Grant... Uh, from the uh, ghost oh, hunter no. show ruined that Halloween special with the, yeah, with the, with the, with the coat. Yeah. He had, you a, could string, see he had a string running down, yeah. his, uh, running down his arm and he'd pull it in his coat. Would, yeah. And yeah. Just ruined it all. For, I mean, I used to watch the three hour Halloween live specials. I mean, I was and, all into and all and that. I think, mess. I think that was a big reason why Jason pulled away from him. Well, I mean, they were supposed to come back. Now they're running, you know, different shows. It's kind of crazy. They're yeah. they're literally running competing shows against each. Their yeah. teams are split in half. Yeah. I mean, it's really. It's like either either they are the greatest duo in history to get two shows, or they really hate each other now. I'm not sure which. Um, I I, th I think they tolerate one another now. Um, uh, yeah. I I, uh, well, I but, mean that that small as a world that is, <laughs> is that really is. You kind of have to. Yeah. Uh, um. You know, well, done... before this jumps up too far in the chat and I lose it, I, I just want to say to Cameron, Cameron Young, uh, your your comment a while ago about the Bigfoot maybe eat their dead, you know, that I didn't bring that up to dismiss it, but that was a perfectly valid argument. Absolutely. That, that, and a theory that some people use. It's just, just that we, it. we normally don't talk about it because it's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it, kind of creepy, but, you know, a lot of other apes do it. Yeah. <laughs> But Especially that is a 
That is a perfectly valid theory, and I did not want you. I do not want you to leave here thinking that I was making fun of you because no, no, I wasn't. A lot of large predators do it. You know, I mean, anytime a new bear comes in and finds babies that aren't his, first thing he does is kill them and eat them. Yummy. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's just it's yeah. the it's the rough world that I don't live in. Yep. I come back to my nice warm house with a roof on it, out of the rain. You know, All right. those poor guys have to live out there and eat babies. Yep. Go to the fr- go to the fridge. Get me the Swanson turkey dinner out. No. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> Diet peach schnapple. That's right. Come on, Joan, where you at? <laughs> no, we are not sponsored by Diet Peach Schnapple. We actually are. Are we? Have wow. you seen the have you seen the commercial? No, I haven't. I, I think we should run the commercial just because we haven't run it one time. If it's well, handy. <laughs> it, it, uh hey, I bet you it is with one click of a mouse. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthew Johnson also lets him rub his crotch and makes him heal his 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 thumb bone triumphs or whatever deep thrown deep bone triumphs whatever the hell he has going on. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is available. Hang on, watch this. You'll you'll get a kick out of this, and we can tell we'll tell one of your stories here about a a fist fight that almost occurred. <laughs> so hang on, why you're gonna enjoy this. You Bigfooters thirsty out there, well I suggest to get a delicious, refreshing Snapple. Yes, even the most famous Bigfoot rush to the store to get themselves their favorite beverage, a delicious peach Snapple. No need to eat when you can just ask your loved one for a delicious beverage. Got it? No, give me a Snapple. And plenty at the store. The diet peach snapple. Try delicious peach snapple. No, get me a snapple. Funny. Oh boy. <laughs> That's right. That is our unofficial sponsor. Oh boy. <laughs> oh yeah. I can see the lawsuits rolling in now, Steve. You're in trouble, buddy. Oh, we've run that like a dozen times already. <laughs> nobody cares. With, uh, nah, nobody. Uh my well, favorite <clears throat> part of the whole commercial is when Rick Dyer falls head first. <laughs> uh it's funny. It's one of them things, you know. If the if the camera wasn't on, he probably wouldn't have done that. You know, poor I tricky know. Ricky. You car salesman from Florida. <laughs> Getting ready to fist fight. Bigfoot extraordinaire. <laughs> Greatest Bigfoot trekker in the world. Find him behind the Home Depot in in, in, in Texas. Uh, I just <laughs> lures them in with some rib bones. <laughs> looks like looks like Tuttle Senior from the freaking Orange County Choppers. I mean, <laughs> God in heaven almighty. Morgan what the hell is that guy's name? Morgan from, Matthews. Morgan Matthews from Shooting Bigfoot threatened within an inch of his life that if he told the truth that Ricky would hunt him down and beat the piss out of him till he was purple. Um, oh, yeah, man. This, this just could go on and on <coughs> and on. Creator of Hank the Sasquatch. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was the most funniest time. of. That was the funniest summer of Bigfoot for me was watching Tricky Ricky ride Hank the Bigfoot around in a, an enclosed trailer from draft house to draft house selling tickets yep. uh, to see yeah. the Bigfoot dick. Yep. <laughs> Tricky Ricky's dicky. Um, oh, my goodness in heaven. <clears throat> well, you know, what was, you know what was really, really funny was I remember the Facebook Find Bigfoot guys. Oh. And, <laughs> and they Martin. were all taking the bus trip to Toronto. To oh, go yeah. see the opening of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's and, not a real Bigfoot, I'll eat my hat. And they're all like, oh, they're on the bus. They got the videos they're putting out there. Everybody say Bigfoot. And they're like, oh, Bigfoot. They all jubilantly go into the into the Hot Docs uh, film festival to see shooting Sasquatch. And then at the end, uh, I, had an, I had a spy in the midst. <laughs> Who sent me pictures immediately after the show where they were all outside 
very disappointed having like this conversation. And another word was never said about it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, you guys, you just didn't listen. You don't listen. Yeah. And, and I mean, that, I, I guess. They were full of crap to begin with. Everything was a Bigfoot. Everything, everything was a Bigfoot. Yeah. I get that there's money in everything being a Bigfoot. I, I, I understand that. I mean, there's there reality doesn't real reality doesn't make money. Right. It doesn't. I mean no. that's why all these TV shows lead you into that. Well, I, that I, think I, of, I I beg to you know I I'll differ on you. I think reality makes money, but I think that they think they want know what people want. Right, right. To, to yeah. Hollywood in their mind. Oh, we gotta keep this going like this. Yeah. Well, God forbid we debunk this. Every single Bigfoot show you've ever seen in your life ends with is Bigfoot real? Well, we don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. To these David. people, it is. To these people, it isn't. You make up your own mind. I'm M.K. Davis. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, um... Just for legal reasons, I am not M.K. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that seems to be the direction of of TV. Now, I, I will I will give Finding Bigfoot some props. There was times they went out there and said, "Ah, eh, we don't think so." Well, I mean, and and that's yeah, that's it, healthy. That's healthy. He did that with Todd. I mean, when Bobo, you know, Bobo, I think he's all Bigfoot Bobo. Um, I love Bobo. Don't get me wrong. Bobo's my buddy. I just, at that time, he was, you know, everything's a Bigfoot Bobo. Um, he yeah. told Todd Standing that he was full of crap. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that was okay. But and, and, and they did that to, and, you they did that to Patterson, you, too. You can't Jeff Patterson? Out, yeah. yeah. You, you can't go out into those investigations with a crew of 40 and actually think that you're going to do something. Yeah. So, because that's there was never a crew less than, I mean, it was huge. It was ridiculous. And then some of the things, flying in on helicopters, you know, <laughs> flying in around the area on, let's just stir up all the shit we can before we go in there at night investigation. Let's scare away every critter, every creature we can, and then we're going to go in there and do a night investigation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I... You know what, but that's that's TV, and I understand that. I get that. I, I get. I kind of get all these shows, but I just what what I get. See, see, Finding Bigfoot was not the first season had issues with their editing. They decided, and I remember this very clearly. The, the cast was like, "Listen, this can't happen this way because it's making us look bad. It's killing our credibility. It can't happen." But you look at like some of these paranormal shows, even some of these cryptid shows. Um, I, I watched them completely destroy the uh, Teddy Roosevelt story, uh, right. you know, where they added on this guy having a gun battle with, with the Sasquatch or whatever. Uh, that, that never occurred in, in, in you know, uh, it, you know, it's the embellishments is what kill, kills it. And I myself have had a few stories I've been involved with and they are about, luckily they are about anywhere from 85 to 95 percent accurate depending on which episode you're looking at there was one that was completely bass backwards and i wasn't involved in that one um the monkey in the new york in new york state in the tree you know the baby bigfoot in the tree one is so hard to swallow well don't i i was actually the first one to investigate that and here's the here's the kick about that one is um, I spoke to the witness about it, and l the movie was le legit like five years old by the time it got to my hands. Didn't He didn't notice it there, didn't observe it there, until one day he was looking through old videotapes, and his fiance knocked, knocked him. And the guy is eccentric as hell. He's from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey, so I understand his language. Right. And she was like, what the hell is that, Doug? Um <laughs> He, he was always very forthcoming about everything, always consistent with everything, came on the air, put his name to it. Hey, you know, this isn't a hoax. Uh, some people over the years have uh, come up with some really cockamamie ideas, but let me let me go into the, this. Was that the first idea, I thought, okay, well, obviously we need to rule out that this is some kind of, of monkey. Well, first of all, the, the, the area did not allow pets in. Uh, the area across the lake was having this music festival. The area that Doug was camped on was an area that was quieter, a lot less traffic. And behind it, 
and I didn't know this for years, but you know, I knew the apple orchard was there. But there was such an abundance of wild strawberries, wild blueberries, wild raspberries, wild blackberries. It was just like I could get out of the car 10 years later and just start picking off the berry bushes. Mm. And, and these had been left there. It was a fruit farm back there. Um, <clears throat> so I, I spoke to the property owner. He, he said, yeah, we, we didn't allow any pets in whatsoever because we, our insurance wasn't rated for that. So... Now we have, well, what is it? It's illegal to own a primate in New York. You got to have a zookeeper's license. And then the final thing was, if that's a monkey in a tree, would you just let your monkey climb in a tree at dusk? <laughs> and then there was the omission of, and Finding Bigfoot never covered it, but was the big one that was in the background. And the, the little one appears to come off the big one. And I've watched this thing frame by frame by frame. There's something like 670 frames to this video, of which about 370 are of the tree in itself. The other 400 frames are off the subject matter, either across at the, at the, uh, on the subjects of the film or across the lake at the, at the film festival. And one, uh, probably about 60 frames of the fire, which they were, they were stoking and burning cans in. And literally, I can pinpoint every single area that this thing was in from where it came off the big one across up over and down now people were trying to say that well perhaps it's a flag on, on a whip antenna well number one i had already asked doug that question and there was no whip antenna or anything like that number two the wind speed was I think negligible at the time that it was happening. So this wouldn't cause this to make all kinds of wild, wild gyrations. So what we're left with is something that is obviously not, um, and, and just by watching it, you know, the motions and, and the, where it traveled throughout the whole entire film, I knew this wasn't something that was pulled up on a string as a prop and being, you know, because it had crossed, it actually had swung across the tree a couple of times and then down in and down. <clears throat> So looking at that, we're left with two things. Either this is somehow a monkey that got snuck in there and the owner's an idiot and just let the monkey go in a tree, which one would think there would be some sort of kerfuffle if that had occurred and somebody would have known about that. Or two, it's something that we can't explain. Is it Bigfoot? I don't know. But it, it, it's likely it could be. Could be and north. It could be Zorth. <laughs> but but at least we well, know what, what's in that tree is not 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 human. And this was one that Steve and I disagreed on <laughs> because I was like ultra skeptical uh, of of the whole deal. To me and my eyes from the video, somebody's got a monkey. The, they let the monkey go on the tree. The, the monkey jumps back. Okay, that's it. Now, Steve would tell me, oh, but there's no monkeys allowed there. You know, that don't matter. There's no speeding on the interstate allowed right, either. But, right. you, know. you know, murders and murders illegal in New York, too. But, you know, yeah. right. the but, thing is, it, what it took me was hours and hours of the same thing Steve did in the first place, which is what I should have done in the first place. After you study that video frame by frame, you eventually find out the monkey has no tail. So the monkey has no snow penis. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, the other, the other interesting thing is the large one is completely dark. Yes. There is no, it's uniform color, completely much taller, much taller. It walks from the, it walks from the, the right to the left. And then after the jump off, it kind of like turns around and comes back and then back in towards the tree. Yep. Um, so to me, it, it, you know, there would have been some kind of kerfuffle. Hey, get down here. Get, 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 get. And they would have. Yeah. They would have been like, oh, what's going on back there? Right. So to me, none of that's going on. Um, so even like the, the psychology of losing a monkey in a tree, because it was unexpected, because the, whatever it is keeps on walking and then it has to turn around and come back. So like, even if it was a human. Bastard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there would have been some kind of reaction. And just the yeah. fact that it's a completely dark object, there's no reaction at all from the people in the fore in the foreground. That you would be verbalizing at it. Hey, get down here. Get over here. Mm -hmm. and no, or yeah. some kind of hand motion. None of that right. goes on. So that's, you know, that's why I, I don't necessarily believe it's, it's, a, uh, it's a monkey necessarily. Well, I went from Could being... It be? Could it be? Yes. I went from being totally skeptical on that video 
to now I kind of like it. And uh, I still don't see, I don't, yeah. I can't see if it's a Bigfoot or not. I don't, but, but I, I kind of like that video now. <clears throat> Before it was just, no, it's a monkey. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> some some tough you know well, that's, some tough. you know, some and you know are, i'm a dick with evidence you know me i'm yeah. a dick with evidence <laughs> some of them are really tough like that i mean you've yeah. got yeah the uh, what the the park ranger um i just had him on the tip of my tongue i'm getting tired here charles uh, branton no 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 the one out here in oregon uh videotaped over the birthday party the tracks um oh 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 freeman, oh, oh, oh. freeman, freeman, Paul yeah. freeman. uh you know in, in in that video you know it's such old technology but you know, the first one that you see that comes, you know, lumbering by the tree just gives the, the feeling that that's a big ass creature. Yeah. If, I if, agree, if, agree, if that's yeah. a dude in a, if that's a dude in a suit, that's a big dude in yeah. a big suit. Yeah. You know, and then as it kind of goes lumbering down and it cuts and it comes back on, and he's like, oh, now there's two of them. Oh, and there's babies down there. I never see any of that. Right. I've never been able to make out any of the additional creatures that freeman claims to see then, with then you get eyes. to the then you get to the blob squatchiness have you ever watched the the bonus content from legend meets science uh the original documentary which did the, the the freeman there is some some very blob squatchy something really appearing to reach over and, and grab something what it is i don't know but to me that lends some credence to the whole thing because here he is tracking something and and, and the film is a long film yeah you know, and that that leads to we we did a whole show on the frame and footage uh, and mm -hmm. talked about it and watched the whole entire video and talked about it. And that's one of the things that I liked about it was that, you know, we get you can always tell a phony video because you just get 10 seconds of a creature and you're done or 25 seconds in a creature and you're done. There is no postscript, no priest, no uh, epilogue, no prologue, nothing. And that's what you're left with. Not even a description of what they encountered. Just, oh, look, we caught Bigfoot on film. <laughs> there right. it is. Right. Whereas at least a frame in film, you have this documentation going on for a while. And then all of a sudden, there it is. And then you have some blob squatchy stuff, which you're like, eh, I'm not sure. But at least it's giving the, 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 the taste of, a ra of rationality. You know, like like the pigeon, like the pigeon, the, the 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 baby swinging in the tree video. Uh, I call it the pigeon footage now. But uh, you you look at that. At least the guy came forward and gave the entire accounting of that story. Right. Right. Um. You know, the interstate. I remember the interstate Wisconsin video came out. You see this thing moving, and finally, I just laid it to the guy. I said, you know what? You know, uh, you know. He he responded back. Well, yeah. Wow, well, it was amazing. What can you be? Yeah, we, it was just, it was really amazing. Like, oh, listen, I go, don't waste my time. If you faked it, just let me know. All right, yeah, me and my brother faked it. <laughs> yeah. We were bored and didn't have much to do. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Done. It's like the, the Georgia footage that keeps getting put up. Oh, the Georgia sheriff was driving down the road with somebody in the car, to, and a Bigfoot crossed in front of him, and, they, and that still gets used on show. Yeah. But yet, if you watch other shows, you've seen where they actually did the investigation and found the high school kids that had the yeah. suit, and they were like, yeah, that was us. We're sorry. You know, We might have had a couple of beers too many, and <laughs> we, won't, we won't do that crap no more. Boy, and we it, made a big mistake. We ran in front of a police car instead of right. a regular car. It, it, exactly. It's like, yeah. whoops. You know, it's like us throwing frog eggs as kids. You didn't want to hit any of the any of the highway workers because they knew where you lived. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, you, that's that whole that whole ten second and done type of thing. Mm. We had brought up finding Bigfoot earlier, and the one thing that I find, you know, I uh, I had met the whole crew several times. I was actually in the uh, the, uh, the 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 tree destruction video uh, uh, episode with Bert Catino up in Fortuna. And uh, we met the crew and everybody, and I and I met Renee, and Renee is a very very nice lady. She yep. she is a very very all of them are very nice. Cliff is Cliff mm -hmm. is an awesome dude. I mean, I would say I'm actually on a personal level with Cliff. Yep. But uh, I sat with Bobo's dad, and we talked for hours. And I won't tell any of those stories, but believe me, if you ever get a chance to talk to Fireball, sit down and have a conversation <laughs> with him. Because wow, Bobo, that's all I can say. Yeah. But her yeah. comments were always, "Oh, I can't see why I can't be a guy in a suit." Well, honey, have you ever put on a suit in shoes that weren't your own? Big floppy shoes and tried to run down a hill without falling on your face and breaking your skull? Because yeah. every time she said that, I wanted to see them put her in a suit and have her reproduce it. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, there were a lot of the stories that those people up there in the hills, we know that the dynamics of, of, of family living, especially in creatures that are kind of endangered 
cause them to chase off their young so that they're not banging their sisters. You know, we talk about an odd, <laughs> an odd topic of conversation, but you know, that's where we get a lot of these same size sightings of these six to seven yep. foot, a, a more aggressive type Bigfoot because they're most likely the rogue males that have been run off by daddy so that they're not trying to breed with the family. Mm -hmm. Now they've got nobody and they're living on the outskirts and they're looking for their own tribe or, or harem or, you know, whatever it is to start. Now, do I know how these things breed? No, but I would expect that they're more like a, that they're, they're more bear like than they would be anything else. A male would climb a, claim a territory and would breed with any willing female that came <laughs> through the territory and kill anyone that wouldn't. I mean, that's, that's just the, 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 it's the kind of thing that would have to happen for them to be able to proliferate on the same mountaintops over and over again. Do they migrate? I think they have to. Um, I don't believe that they can live in 10 and 20 feet of snow. I think the, why, why would they, when the, as the yep. crow flies, they're literally 18 miles from living in no snow, you know, 60 degree weather during the days, 40 degree weather at night and food all yeah. over the place. Why yeah. would they stay in 10, 10 and 20 foot deep snow banks? That's just yeah. stupid. Follow the food. The deer come down into lower, yep. into lower altitudes during the winter time. Why wouldn't the Sasquatch? Yep. So you've got all that movement that goes along with that too. And, you know, right where the, the my area of study is now in the in the, in the Pai Pai Valley is, you know, that's all lower Tahoe Basin. And that's just been historically snowed and iced in over wintertime. Why would any of those animals stay up there? They certainly wouldn't. They would come down and fill in the valleys in between where there isn't any of that stupid snow going on and they could sleep in comfort. Yep. So, you know, the, I think with the fires that we had out here this year, last year and the year before, which really burned out vast quantities of forest structured land. Uh, we really only have so many valleys that are going to be able to support these creatures. Yeah. We're gonna, we might see a dynamic change. Uh, and I think we may end up seeing yeah. more of them invading people's backyards, getting caught in dumpsters, getting caught in campgrounds, getting caught, you know, in mining locations. I talk to miners all over California. I don't know if that's, if you knew that I'm a prospector, but I do. I talk yeah. to, I talked to, to to gold prospectors all over California, and they all have a story. Well, all you know, it's it's funny you mention that because I have a friend who does a lot of mining in Maine, and boy, those guys have some stories too. Yeah, I mean, they're not all Bigfoot stories, but they've all got yeah. a story of some kind of uh, creature or another that they can't identify, or something spooky that happened yeah. to them one night, or some kind of weird sounds that they don't ever want to hear again. Yeah. And uh, you know that it, it's it's you know you you live a lifetime of that, and you you end up just getting a feeling for what is real and what isn't real yep you know what is embellished and what isn't embellished and some people say i don't know what i saw but i can tell you it looked like this and i've never mm -hmm. seen another one and guys two hours has flown by pow just like that man <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> we could go uh, on i wasn't even long. watching the clock uh, yeah <laughs> I, we could go on for like another two hours at the rate we're going here yeah 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 uh, uh, i love having reverend jeff as a guest yeah. he's great <laughs> we'll have to come back for <laughs> have to come back for part two for another yeah day. i'm down and uh you know so reverend what you got going on the podcast what you got going uh, you know? well, we are finally at the end of the season we've got a bigfoot entertainment monthly coming up this week with your old pal wes losner we'll talk some little post up a Bigfoot movie to watch and then we'll review it. You know, we watch the really horrible ones so you don't have to. <laughs> uh, 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 and then uh, the following Wednesday after that, we'll start with the super fan shows uh, with uh, Cameron Young. We're going to talk about uh, Alaskan and Canadian Bigfoot and uh, come the beginning of the year in season nine, we're getting back to stuff that's real. The season of hoaxing is over. I need a little bit of better taste in my mouth. So we're going to try and start the, <laughs> an, an evidence to year. Yep. And really start to review some of the real evidence that's out there and, and why that stuff is important to remember. That even casts that we found in the 50s are just as important as stuff that we're finding today. Just flashing some of the Thank messages. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And Thank again. You uh, for coming out and listening to me ramble for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, why don't you do your thing? Well, I, I, I want to thank the Reverend Captain Jeff Kelly for coming <laughs> on. And uh, I want to thank all of our listeners for joining us tonight. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're watching us for the first time on YouTube, if you hadn't already, uh, please like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification button. You know, it really helps out the channel. Thanks. And Reverend, one more question. Do you own more than one boat? More than one boat? No. Yeah. I have just one Damn. Person. I one could boat. I could have promoted you to Reverend Admiral. 
Admiral, Admiral, yeah, see that? Admiral. You yeah, got to get a second boat, even if it's just like a, <laughs> a little tug, a little, 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 little uh, a couple of or boards something. with a with a yeah. log, couple of logs. That's all. Well, yeah, you know, I do have a dredge; it floats. Does that count? <laughs> okay, you can call it. So, well, from now on, you're going to be known as the Reverend Admiral. <laughs> the Reverend Admiral. There we go. That works for me. <laughs> you Thanks for having me on, Steve. Really, anytime, brother. And yeah. folks, on behalf of everybody here on Squatch DTV, we want to wish everybody a happy, safe, and healthy week. Remember, mask up. The and COVID is still out there. Shoot your potato cannon at grandma from the car. That's, <laughs> yeah, amen to that. So, folks, again, have a great week. We'll be here next week, November 29th, with Kentucky Bigfoot researcher Charlie Raymond. So we do have uh, a guest for next week, so we're all good to go. It's going to be a and, great show. Yep, just like this one was. Okay, folks, we'll catch you all next week. Squatch DTV. Sunday nights, and, Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, and keep on squatching. You've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.